Tropical cyclones are 100 to 1,000 kilometers in diameter and extend into the troposphere about 15 kilometers. They are split into three categories based on wind speed. A hurricane must have wind speeds upward of 33 meters per second, while a tropical storm has wind speeds between 17 and 33 meters per second, and anything weaker is a tropical depression. Wind speeds exceeding 50 meters per second are classified as a major storm, or a level 3 or above hurricane. While they may be sustained over warm water, these cyclones quickly dissipate when they pass over land. Storm season falls between summer and early fall, and storm frequency is very sensitive to changes in climate. In the Pacific especially, the presence of El Nino leads to storms further east than without. Because of this, it is very difficult to establish worldwide trends for tropical storms. Each year brings increases and decreases in different places. The term tropical cyclone refers to a system with a low pressure center and thunderstorms around it that are characterized by strong winds and heavy rain. For a tropical cyclone to form, surface sea temperatures, or SSTs, must be at or above 26 to 27 degrees Celsius, and the storm must be formed about 7 degrees latitude from the equator. Thus, the rising temperatures of climate change and the subsequent rise in SSTs have led some scientists to believe that over the years, the number and intensity of tropical cyclones and storms have increased, a hypothesis that would seem to be supported by examples such as Hurricane Katrina and the numerous hurricanes that have hit Haiti in the past decade. However, inconsistencies in data and the ensuing inaccuracies in trend analysis have made some scientists doubt the validity of the claims that tropical storms have been increasing in frequency, instead arguing that the change is negligible. As previously stated, because tropical storms require high sea surface temperatures, the rising temperatures due to global warming will create a more favorable environment for storms to develop. However, contrary to this hypothesis, it is also possible that fewer storms will develop. Tropical storms derive their energy from the release of latent heat through evaporation. A high gradient between the atmosphere's temperature and SST would lead to greater evaporation rates and thus more energy for the cyclones. Thus, global climate change, the effect of which is more clearly seen in the atmosphere than in the ocean, would equalize the gradient and the disequilibrium that tropical storms derive their energy from would be reduced. Because of this uncertainty, only empirical claims can be made, and recently, high-resolution models have been used to reach a consensus that tropical storms will get worse in the future. In a report entitled Sea Surface Temperatures and Tropical Cyclones in the Atlantic Basin by Davis, Knappenberger, and Michaels, the relationship between SSTs and tropical cyclone intensity is discussed at length. In it, it is stated that there is a threshold of 28.25 degrees Celsius that must be exceeded for a major storm to occur, with 50 meters per second wind speeds. However, any increase past this threshold yields little to no increase in intensity. Thus, the conclusion is that the increase in SSTs will cause more major hurricanes to occur, but will have no effect on the intensity. In addition, the study actually showed that SSTs played a smaller role than thought in the characteristics of storms. From 1995 to 2005, there was a 50% increase in the number of major storms, while only an increase in maximum SST from 28.95 to 29.28 degrees. Obviously, something more than temperature changed in the tropical environment to cause such a radical increase. The increases in SSTs do not fully explain the changes in tropical cyclone intensity, Thus, other factors are at work. In 1990, the IPCC report stated that tropical cyclones were not affected by warming based on current evidence. However, the report admits that it's possible that the warming of the ocean is insignificant as of yet. For example, in the North Indian Ocean region, there has been a decrease in the frequency of cyclones, although it is the region with the greatest increase in SSTs. In addition, tropical cyclone patterns are closely linked to ENSO, such as in the Northwest Pacific. Although the warming of the oceans would introduce more favorable conditions for the formation of cyclones, yearly fluctuation, the scale of observations, and lack of accurate records all add a factor of uncertainty into the frequency trends stated in the 1990 IPCC report. In the same manner, intensity trends were recorded, but more accurate wind speed records allow for more accurate trend analysis. No positive correlation was seen between warming and cyclone intensity. In 1995, the IPCC report still maintained that there was little to no correlation between the warming of the oceans and intensity or frequency of tropical storms. 
The position taken by the report was also much more assertive, stating very clearly that the apparent increase in intensity was purely due to faulty data collection methods and that other trends were also probably due to biased data. This report even goes as far as to suggest that there is a downward trend in intense hurricane activity. The report also attributes more frequent El Nino episodes to the decrease in hurricane intensity. However, it also makes the point that inconsistencies in data lead to unsure conclusions in trend analysis, and it is still agreed upon that the trend is difficult to confirm. The one example in which the data is of sufficient quality is that of the Atlantic, where mean maximum wind speeds decreased, but the peak intensity was still the same. In the 2001 report, the consensus was that there was a numerical decline in the number of moderate and strong storms since the late 1980s, but an increase of severe storms. However, both these trends were deemed negligible. Though statistically unimportant, the trend in the intense storms indicates that while ENSO determines the frequency of cyclones in a region, the intensity is affected by other factors. In addition, due to differences in regional trends, a global trend is also difficult to ascertain. For example, there was no appreciable long-term variation of the number of cyclones observed in the North Indian, Southwest Indian, and Southwest Pacific Oceans east of 160 degrees east, but in the Northwest Subtropical Pacific Basin, tropical cyclone frequencies decreased from 1960 to 1980, but increased from 1982 to 1984. In addition, the report still cites inaccuracies in data as the reason for lack of trends. The final report in 2007 projected a likely increase in peak wind intensities and increased precipitation in tropical cyclones. Essentially, the report predicted more severe storms based on embedded high-resolution models and global models. In addition, the report predicts a decrease in the number of weak storms, with most of the increase occurring in intense storms. Although there are some projections that stated that there will be a decrease in the overall number of storms, the report says that it is less likely. This change in ideology could have been brought on by the number of severe storms in the last decade, especially Hurricane Katrina. A natural disaster on that level causes people to be inclined to be careful, and the report subsequently goes from being skeptical to believing without a doubt that there is an increase. For example, a study was done simulating three times atmospheric carbon dioxide, and the simulation showed a 56% increase in the number of major storms. Another simulation, comparing a decade now and a decade at the end of the 21st century, found a 30% decrease in storm frequency, but an increase in extreme storms with maximum wind speeds increasing 14%. These data support the overall projection that intensity will increase while frequency will decrease. The scientific explanation for this would be that the increase in atmospheric temperatures would lead to less latent heat being released thus fewer storms, but the increase in SSTs and various changes in atmospheric characteristics such as carbon dioxide levels would lead to more intense storms. While it is true that tropical storms need higher surface water temperatures, the actual trend between an increase in the number and intensity of tropical storms and rising temperatures is uncertain. The data are not perfectly accurate due to measuring inconsistencies and changing standards for tropical cyclones. For example, in 1950, more high-level storms were recorded than actually occurred. The lack of records also hurts trend analysis, such as in the Indian Ocean. Thus, trends are difficult to ascertain, and some scientists believe that the increase in temperature is increasing the number of tropical storms, while some believe that it has a negligible effect. In addition, because the science in the matter is indecisive, hypotheses are difficult to make, and data is the optimal way to analyze trends. This further hurts trend analyses because of lack of data to compare to. However, due to recent disasters, some scientists have began to think that global warming has more to do with tropical cyclones than previously thought, and that the increase in temperature is in fact causing more intense storms. Others calculated that the increases in SSTs have not accounted for all of the changes in the characteristics of tropical storms and that other unknown factors are the main cause for increase in storm activity in the post-1994 Atlantic. While the consensus was uncertain at best for the first three reports, the final report changed from projecting a negligible change in storm frequency and intensity to a decrease in frequency but an increase in intensity. In addition, the first three reports stress that data is inconsistent and that trends cannot be drawn due to inconsistencies in data, 
while the last report cites simulations as data for projections of the future. In the first three reports, data was clearly the first thing that needed to be collected for trend analysis. However, because this data is generally decadal to account for ENSO events and other natural factors, the data was never suitably collected, and the fourth report depended on simulations instead. This change was likely brought on by the severe hurricanes such as Katrina that caused huge amounts of damage and the increased frequency of these major storms in the last decade. Because of the risk and damages associated with these storms, the consensus suddenly shifted to a more careful outlook. In case more storms are likely, data had to be collected somehow as soon as possible, as simulations were the best way to do so. Thus, the fourth report finally projects a hypothesis for the future. The number of intense storms will likely increase, but will lead to a decrease in the total number of storms.